G'day, I'm Cam, and this is my wife's 10th gen Kindle. It's currently broken. She accidentally dropped a power bank on it when getting it out of her handbag, and I was there. It was total accident mistakes happen. But uh, getting it fixed has turned out to be a much bigger problem than it should be. See, I did what most people normally would do. I jumped on Amazon chat and uh, asked them, what are my options? I explained that we broke it, so I'm not doing a warranty claim, but I would like it repaired. They say that they don't have any repair facilities in Australia, and that my best bet at getting the broken screen replaced would be to take it to a smartphone repair shop. So I did what I would do and pulled it apart myself. I tore it down and it was pretty simple to take apart, and I started recording down all of the part numbers, but Searching those didn't really turn up a lot of results, and that's where this started to turn into a much bigger problem than I originally anticipated. Now, this is my robot vacuum. Now, recently, its LDS, or laser distance sensor, stopped working. This is the LiDAR radar. It allows it to know where it is. It would start up, the sweeper arm would start spinning, the motorhead would start to drive, but the LDS sensor on top wouldn't move. And then it would give you an error. It was a very easy error to search on Google and find many ways to resolve this. But since it was under warranty, I hit up the seller I bought it through. And they hit me back with, yep, that's a pretty common issue. You've got two options. One, you can send the unit back to us. It's pretty heavy and it's gonna take a while to go either back to them to be repaired in Australia or back over to the manufacturer in China. Or two, we can just send you the part. It's the whole all-in-one unit and you can replace it yourself. And well, that's what I did. I was able to pull apart the robot vacuum, there was a couple of screws on top, and then eventually the whole unit just unplugged. It was designed by the manufacturer to be easily repaired. They knew that the motor that drives the LDS sensor unit might give out, and they made it very easy to replace the entire module by the consumer. And then put it in, it just plugs in and screwed everything back up, and well, if you saw my Instagram, where all my behind the scenes are, you'd know that it started working completely fine. Now, obviously, I've got a very DIY repair mindset. You may not be the same, and you may have done Amazon's advice at the very start, and that is call a local repair shop. So I did that. I called them, and I said, I've got a broken Kindle screen. Their response, multiple stores, was, if it's the latest gen, we can't help you. We can replace the battery. The battery is easy to get to, but we can't do a broken screen. They simply said they cannot get the parts, rendering this completely useless. Amazon won't touch it, and the people who want to touch it can't get the things needed to repair the device. This wasn't always the case. See, iFixit is fighting for their right to repair movement, providing knowledge and resources on how to repair your own tech to limit the amount of fixable devices from going into e-waste, in the end, creating a more sustainable solution. But even they don't have any guides for the Kindle Pass 7th Gen. 2014, it stops there on their site, and googling for replacement e-paper displays is the same. Nothing comes up for current generation. So what was once a repairable device no longer is, which leads me to believe this lack of support from Amazon with the Kindle is due to more likely a recent design change and part availability. Now you may be thinking, is it worth it? The cost of a new display versus a new device, and probably not. But remember, this is a portable mobile e-reader. It's at risk of damage to its screen every time it's moved, just like a phone or an iPad. And although it's a relatively low cost itself, there should still be some service offered by Amazon or a easier way to repair a current generation device, especially one as popular as a Kindle. If I can easily repair a robot backroom with freaking laser beams attached to his head, then changing a simple screen on a device should still be a possibility. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you've had a similar interaction with either a Kindle or a different manufacturer's product. We kind of need to know what companies are doing the right thing in repairing products that they create and what ones are just sending them off to landfill. Now in the case of our Kindle, well, unfortunately we've kind of had to buy another one. All of our books are in the Kindle ebook ecosystem. So it would cost us a lot more money than buying another Kindle than it would to replace all of the books that my wife has purchased that goes on this thing. So you kind of get trapped into just supporting something you don't really want to support. 
So hopefully this one lasts a bit longer because we've figured out you can't repair the screens. If you've got a Kindle, well, take good care of it. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up down below. And if you loved it, consider clicking subscribe. My name's Cam and I make tech videos every week and I'd love to see you back here again. I've got a couple of videos coming up on the screen and I'll make this one the robot vacuum review. We've got a house full of German Shepherds and they shed like crazy. Actually, Norman's our new little puppy and he's starting to shed now. And this does a great job of cleaning that up. Also remember that all my behind the scenes creating these videos are over on Instagram, so go give me a follow there. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.